Hey guys, it's Foka, and today I'm going to be breaking down my new track, Flickr, which just came out last Friday on Exobolt Worlds Volume 1, which you should go check out, by the way. So, let's just get started on the intro. So, the first thing we have here is this piano, which is a Maggio Piano 2, with some OTT, I think around 50% or so, and um, EQing, which I think it's basically untouched at the beginning of the song. But this EQ starts doing something around here. And then we have this pluck, this vocal thing here, which is basically just a vocal sample that I got off Splice. And then it just has some Dimension Expander, which I wouldn't normally use, but I just kept it in. And um, reverb, OTT, chorus, EQing, and then this which comes in a bit later i think so i won't worry about that now and then also some birds which i got off splice with some reverb and eqing i don't know why i guess it was just to be safe and then right before the piano actually so what this is is just pookie's vocals with a lot of reverb and delay and i think it worked really well for you know the intro like without it. Just fills up a lot of space. And then over here, I just have this impact. Yeah. So what this is, is just a, a vocal pluck, pretty much. It just sounds like this. I got it from Splice. So for the effects, it's just a dimension expander, uh, reverb, OTT, chorus, and EQing. And um, it works really well with the piano. It just sounds like... Now, uh, for the next eight bars, this thing comes in, which is one of my favorite parts of the intro, actually. So this is, with no effects, it sounds like this. You know, pretty basic. It's just a serum, um, a serum patch, which is just a sine wave with some extra harmonics, which you can draw in by clicking this button and then, you know, doing that and then as far as effects go we have a delay at the beginning a crystallizer which um is going down an octave actually so that you can actually hear the you know the dry signal a little clear and then it like swells in so so i'm using killer's reverb here which i found creates a really nice room you know effect uh especially when you have the decay damage size all the way down it just it's really nice and then some EQing. It's very... And then, okay. I'm using the OTT plugin, which I don't do anymore. I know this is controversial, but this song is over a year old. Um, so, you know, it's at 78%. And then another delay um, on 33%. And then a Valhalla Supermassive, which... It's just big. Like, I don't use Supermassive a lot anymore, but I just found it, it works well for some sounds, like this especially. And then an EQ. Which I'm automating like this. It's just um, a low pass filter, which is going, you know, up and down. Yeah, really nice. And then a Soothe, because it needed it. Please don't be... Okay, yeah. So... It's doing a lot. And then a goo, a and then a, a goo compressor, and then a glue compressor, and I really like that sound. It sounds really good in the intro. Um, yeah. And then this is okay. This is really simple as well. This is a very simple sound. It's literally just a sine wave, with um, what I have here is an LFO which is really quick. It's just a really quick, you know, spike just going down. And I put it on the course pitch, so it has, you know, a bit more of a click to it. That's without it, and then, you know, it's a bit more attacky. And then I have a hyper dimension on it, which is just widening it, and then a flanger, which is a flanger, flanger, which is doing its thing, you know? And then I have a crystallizer here, 
which is going up an octave, unlike this thing before, a reverb, uh, and then an OTT again, 26%, and EQ, which I am automating, goes down before this, you know, break section. Yeah, and sounds really good. And then here, so this is just a pad that I made a while ago. Let me see where I can find this. Just a pad I made. Uh, probably just a bunch of sine waves with some reverb. And I have an OTT at 62%. I know the plugin is just, it's ugly. I don't think the actual pad itself was like long enough to fit the section I wanted it to. So I am warping it on the texture mode, which I think sounds really good. You might not be able to tell totally in context with everything else, but... Yeah. Uh, and then next up we have another Imagio Piano, because it sounds really good again. So this is an OTT at 41% with a delay. So it plays this little melody, which I really like. There's actually a lot of, you know, little hidden melodies throughout the song. So, you know, if you want to go try and seek all of them out, they're, they're hidden. And yeah, I have this auto pan, you know, going between your left and right ear. I mean, with no effects, it would sound like this. It's boring. Oh, and there's another OTT. That's great. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so. My mom is calling me. It's another pad I made. Um, it's basically made the same way, just different, you know, notes. Oh, it's actually this melody with a lot of delay. I think you can hear that. You can kind of hear the... Yeah, so it's with a lot of delay. And I just put a crystallizer on it, which is going up an octave. A reverb, some EQing, and yeah. And then for transitional effects, I put this little sample from Splice, which is just... And has some reverb. Yeah, and all I did for this one is I just reversed it. Okay, right, so this is the break section. So here I'm taking out the piano, I'm taking out this thing. And so I'm just leaving some atmospheres. So this is the same melody as before. Just with a different patch. So let me see this. So this is a sine wave with one extra harmonic. Um, and I'm using the noise, the serum noise in organics, air can three. And it's, oh, that's cool. Okay. So it's being pitch tracked. So it's actually changing notes, um, with some little, a little bit of tube distortion. Um, so that's what it sounds like with no effects. And then I'm doing the kilohertz reverb thing again with the size and the decay down. So I'm using Spectral Time here, which is one of my favorite, you know, newish things that Ableton added. What I'm doing with it is I have the dry wet all the way up, the mix all the way up, and I'm this tilt is basically, um, I don't know exactly how to explain it. I'm pretty sure. I think it's kind of the same as FL's, uh, what is it, Spectral Delay. It splits it up into a bunch of bands and um, just plays them at different times. I don't know. I don't actually know if that's the same, but you know, you can hear it kind of gives it this like lasery effect. And then I have the stereo up, which is basically, you know, makes it wide. And then an OTT at 53%, another reverb, which is actually, oh, 
the decay, the decay in the size are actually up on this one, guys. Um, so the size is at 97 and the decay is at 14. Uh, then we have a delay and an EQ. This is, wow, I actually don't know. So I'm assuming this is uh, the piano, this piano, the one that's in the intro, stretched to oblivion and has a shit ton of delay on it. No, it just has a, okay, so it just has a lot of delay on it and I'm using the tail end here. Pitched up an octave and on the beats mode. So it gets really, you know, grainy and shit. And this is just another little thing. Let's see. So this sounds like just a sine wave. Yeah, it's literally just a sine wave with, with a, a little bit of release. And so this is an OTT at 39%. So I have a reverb that, uh, you know, is doing its thing, and I'm automating the mix of the reverb to go up during the buildup. And then I have this Ozone 10 imager, which is, okay, I don't know if I would totally recommend doing this, um, but it's just widening the shit out of the sound. Um, if you have this, basically what I did is I turned it on um, stereo-wise, I turned it up all the way, and I'm just widening it like that. Yeah, that is kind of stupid, but whatever. And then just an EQ. And I think... Okay, no. Yeah, just an EQ. Uh, a low cut. And yeah. And then over here, we have the sub. Okay, so this is a basic CJW um, wavetable with a, another sine wave that is an octave and seven semitones up with a filter like this. Um, and then I have a, oh, okay. So that thing I was doing earlier with the coarse pitch LFO, I'm doing it in reverse here. So it's actually pitching up instead of, it's starting low and then going up. And then I uh, hear I'm using a, a Ableton stock plugin uh, or effect, uh, vinyl distortion and i'm using it in a in a a fun little way here to make the sub you know sound stereo so i thought that was really cool and then i'm just boosting it with the saturator uh i have a notch here on the sub uh at around 114 hertz just to clean it up a little bit and then here i have this eq i think it's just yeah so the sub just gets cut out in the buildup. Um, glue compressor to make it a little louder. Yeah. And here. So I have some vocal chops. This is pretty interesting. Um, that I'm using in the drop, but I put them in the intro just to, you know, introduce them a little early. I don't know why they're on the left so much, but... Yeah, they are. Um, <laughs> no effects. It just sounds like this. I think it's from the Splice Heather pack. You can you can find them easily. So for effects, we have a vocoder, which so the vocoder is doing nothing. Um, and then, okay, this one is. So this is uh, so this vocoder is on the modulator mode. You can kind of hear what it's doing if you have the dry wet all the way up. You can kind of hear what it's doing if you have the dry wet all the way up. And yeah, so then we have an OTT at 81%. Um, this kilohertz reverb, which has, you know, the decay in size all the way down again, which I have on here, but off in the drop. And then I have this, so I'm parallel processing these vocals with the dry signal here. That's the dry signal? Oh yeah, I guess it is. So that's the, the dry signal. And then I have... Why? Okay, this is kind of pointless, but I guess this was before I had the killer hertz reverb. Um, basically, it's the dry signal with another one that's a little quieter with reverb, you know, with a very short decay, and then I'm widening it. So, wow, I'm widening it a lot. Okay, that, ignore that. That's embarrassing. And then another OTT at 81%, and then some EQing. 
can actually hardly hear them in, the, in this section, but it is what it is. And then over here, I'm also taking another element from the drop. Uh, oh, holy shit. Okay, I forgot what this looked like. Okay, there's a lot here. But I'm going to make this simple. It's a virtual riot atmosphere. With... I'm using this LFO, which is connected to this EQ, which is, you know, doing some shit. Uh, two dispersers. Uh, some saturation. A lot of compression. More compression. EQing. More, oh, more compression. A soothe. Um, some reverb that I have on in, the tr in this intro part more reverb that I have on in this intro part and a uh, redux which I am automating right before the build up so it's like you know I have some reverb that's being automated during the build up this soothe that I have off in the drop um, this EQ that I have on in the build or that I have on in this breakdown but off in the drop oh wait no I do have it okay so yeah and there's some EQing and then a glue compressor and then let's go to the drums. So for the drums, I have this kick that my friend Selassie sent me a while ago, actually. So yeah, I have some EQing on it because I didn't like where this set, you know, where the kick would land. So I just basically like, that's a cool thing I do with kick sometimes. Um, you can, you know, kind of choose where to that last note hits but it can create some like weird resonance uh in the low end so i wouldn't totally recommend doing it all the time and then an ott at four percent because you know why not and then this clap is interesting um so this is a barely live clap and the reason it sounds like this is because i think so i was inspired by zim i think he did this in anthesis um, so I'm frequency shifting it down a lot and then I have a resonator that's in key with the track and then I'm widening it I don't think Zim did this part but I did and then an OTT at 22% some EQing and yeah I think it worked you can't really hear the resonator in the tune or in the track you can't hear the you can't really hear the resonator in the track but I think it works all right You can kind of tell. Um, and then for the symbols, I have this uh, Sultan ride that I'm playing this little, you know, rhythm in. Yeah, sounds pretty cool. They're pitched down 24 semitones or 12 semitones. That's what the regular one sounds like. And then an auto pan and then a little bit of uh, a high cut. And then this is... Okay, I have a snap here as well to go on top of the clap. It's mostly for like background effects, which is just an OTT, a reverb, and an EQ on this snap sample. This one. All right, let's get into the build now. So in the build for the drums, I have um, the drop kick, but it's being heavily EQ'd. This kick is just one that Selassie also sent me a while ago. So yeah, it's just being EQ'd. I keep the snap, but yeah. Um, so the kick is just going fast. You know and then i layered it with this boot clap which is pretty old actually it's a pretty old sample yeah and i'm just eqing it and putting some reverb on it it sounds like this so yeah um so in the build i uh i put the piano back in but it's being, okay, it's being EQ'd pretty heavily. And then I have this, just this, 
saw that's... Oh, wait, no, it's not a saw. Oh, no, it is. So this saw with a, a pretty heavy filter, 14 voices of uh, unison. So for the effects, you just have a hyperdimension, a reverb, and an OTT, another one, and an EQ. And it's just playing this one chord. Okay, so moving on, we have this thing that from the intro before, um, doing the same thing as the piano with the filter. You have this thing from the break as well. Mm -hmm. And then this uh, piano atmosphere again. And then two risers that I made. This first one um, is just, I think it's a detune saw wave with reverb. Really, like, just really simple. Same with this one. It's basically the same thing, just a square wave. Yeah. And then um, this is the other effect that, that like, breath sound. Um, and then this is a, a white noise riser that I made, and I just reversed it and um, frequency shifted it from 500 hertz to negative 500 hertz. Anyways, this is what that sounds like. And then the reverb, and then OTT, EQ, and then this utility, which is just... Um, oh, it is doing nothing. Okay, never mind. <laughs> and then, yeah, uh, this uh, bird sample never actually stops playing throughout the entire intro and breakdown, so that stays. And then these VR effects, I put them in the same... Um, they're two different samples, but I put them in the same uh, um, channel, just because it didn't matter. Yeah. And then this is... Oh yeah, the sub. Okay, uh, same as before. It's just playing the other progression from the build now. And it's getting um, low cut up, or high passed up. And then it goes back down. And this is just uh, a resample of this, the main sound from the drop, except it has an EQ, so it's just being filtered. All the highs and the lows are cut out, and a delay and a reverb, and it just introduces it in the drop, or it introduces it in the build. Yeah. So this is the same vocal from before, except I'm using its long reverb tail uh, to turn it into a riser as you can hear. So it's pretty cool. And then the pre-drop is pretty simple as well. Just a resample of the main sound with some reverb and delay that I am automating to double the speed of um, with this, when this laser hits. Um, so you can see here, like it just, it speeds up and it's cool. And then there's a sound that I made a while ago. Really simple. There's the Selassie riser, which is my favorite riser of all time. And yeah, that's kind of it for the pre-drop. And now we can move on to the drop. Yeah, let's just start with the drums. There's a lot going on in here. Probably some of it's empty, but whatever. So first thing we have here is this kick. This is a cake that Tulasi sent me, and I just put on EQ, which is just, um, yeah, it's an EQ. And then I have this transient shaper, which is just, uh, I think the attack is up, right? So the transient, you know, comes through a little bit more in the mix. Uh, these symbols, this is the hat from the intro, or the break. It's this one. And then I have these two. This one is a shameless loop i think let me see yeah it is the loop one so it's just the loop but chopped up and then this is a zenith crash i think yeah yes it is and then this first clap uh is a boog clap just with a transient shaper so that the transient's a little stronger and there's an eq um 
I do change the drums in this a lot, as you will see shortly. There's this chime sample at the end of every four bars just to do that. And in context, that sounds like this. So, and there's also this amplifier symbol that's doing the same thing. In the second half of the first drop, I change the clap to this Sultan one and also my own clap, which sounds like this. I just thought it fit really well. And in context, you can like hear Yeah, and now we can move on to the actual uh, sounds of the drop, or the first one. So the main element that you hear in the first drop, the main sound, is this. Um, and I'm going to make it clear, this uh, without effects, this is what it sounds like. It sounds horrible, and that's okay, because you can't tell. It's just, it's a really pretty shitty serum patch, actually. Like, it could probably honestly be anything and it would sound the same, but, um... So, but the first thing in the chain is an OTT vocoders. There's three of them. Actually, there's four of them. And they are all going to... These three elements. So it's this. It sounds pretty bad, but it's it it works. And then there's this. So it's those three. Those are the main things that uh, everything's getting vocoded to. So this first one is the cashmere pluck. Oops. First one is the cashmere pluck. Next one is that vocal thing. Then the last one is the chord stack. So this LFO, it might seem kind of goofy, but um, it's automating this EQ, which is a trick I learned from Zim. It's actually, it's cool the way it works. I don't know how to explain it. I learned it a while ago and I just kept it in. Um, two dispersers, another uh, vocoder that is being automated in the second half of this section after the uh, first four bars, it's being uh, automated up by 7%, um, and then it's being compressed a lot, EQ, OTT, Soothe, uh, just a bunch of compression. And then that's that sound. And then some lore is, in an early version of this, I did not have this. I didn't have that. But when I was listening to it one day, I heard that melody in the bass, and I was like, what if I just like put it in the song? Um, so this is here to accentuate that melody and it it works pretty well in combination with this bass. So all this is is a sine wave um, with a chorus, a reverb, an OTT, and that's it. And then this one is a uh, probably a saw wave. Yeah, it is. Uh, with this noise paper bag. Let me solo it really quick. Yeah, so it's just a Foley thing. That's what it sounds like with no effects. Then you add the chorus, the reverb, and the OTT and the EQ, and it sounds like this. And then this one is a little glockenspiel. Yeah, glockenspiel. Sorry. Uh, with a chorus, OTT, and an EQ. And then this is... What this is, uh, is a resample of of all the sounds in the first drop. And then the cool thing is I used Ableton's stretch algorithm on beats mode, and I will give you an example of that right now. So this is probably what I used for it. You can take anything, turn on warp mode, make sure it's on beats. And if you hit this two, if you just like drag this BPM, it does the same thing. You can hit like two times. And then I just consolidated it with control J. And then it does this. Yeah. And then I just, I took that and I chopped it up and put, here, let's see. So I put a vocoder on it. That's going to the uh, super saws, two dis three dispersers, sorry, a spiff, which is just a 
a, like a spectral transient shaper. It's pretty cool. And an EQ. And then it made this. And it layered pretty well. This might just be the sub. So all this is is a sine wave with some bright white noise. Uh, no distortion. I'm boosting it with a saturator by 13 decibels. And I have a notch filter at 183 hertz. Then I have a glue compressor just to boost it more. So I have for the sub, it's just a sine wave with some bright white noise. LFO with the pitch. Um, for just for the initial like punchiness of the sub. Um, and then I'm boosting it by 13 decibels with a saturator. Uh, I have a notch filter at 183 decibels just to clean it up a little bit and then a glue compressor. And then I'm obviously uh, automating the pitch bend of it. Um, so it's pretty cool. So for the fills, I have this first growl, I think. So for the patch, uh, let's see. So for this patch, I have the monster seven wavetable and I have this LFO on the wavetable shape or the wavetable position. This is it with no effects, by the way. And then I have bright white noise. Let me see, where is, yeah. I am FMing it from nothing, apparently. Yeah, this FM from B is doing nothing. I have this filter on uh, with two peaks. So I have this filter. I have this uh, hyper dimension. Most of these are being um, modulated with this LFO. So this chorus and then this OTT. And yeah, and then the effects are like uh, compression. I'm automating the pitch bend like this. And then along with that, I am automating this bandpass filter to move like this. As you can see, I have this vocoder that's on modulator and it's just this corpus. Uh, I'm automating this peak of the CQ like this, just for more movement. This vocoder that I have going to the, uh, this thing. It's this thing. And that's what makes it still melodic. Um, then I have two dispersers, uh, an OTT, saturator, a crystallizer, which is, oh wait, no, it's not turning. Okay. Okay. I'll get to that in a second. Then I have two OTTs. No, I have three OTTs. My bad. Three OTTs that are at a hundred percent an EQ at the end because I have a an external sub here. Yeah, uh, and all that is is um, it's literally a sine wave with these harmonics, just to fill it, uh, just to fill up the space, and then a, a tube distortion, saturating it and boosting the lows a little bit with an EQ, and then for this other one, I had to freeze it because uh, well, I'll explain why in a minute. I think it's the same exact patch, except. The vocoder is, uh, it's, the dry wet's up a little bit more. Yeah. And then I froze it because the crystallizer, um, kept randomizing how many grains would, like, be generated by it. Uh, and I just wanted it to be consistent, uh, so I froze it. So I have these vocal chops, which are just from the Heather, the Kara pack from Splice. And I'm processing them, you know, kind of heavily. So I have this vocoder, which is going to this stack right here that we were talking about earlier. That shit. And um, then I have an OTT. I am parallel processing this. So one with the dry signal. And then one with a reverb signal. Um, just a really short reverb. And then I have this uh, ozone imager, which is widened to fucking oblivion. Oh my god. Just so that, you know, you have the mono signal here. And then a wide one. Just for room. Uh, we have this. This is the same pluck from the vocoding stack. Oh, wait. It's this one. Except 
uh, in the drop, you can't, ob you obviously, you know, you can't hear this. It's meant to be off. It's just supposed to be for vocoding things. But I actually liked how this sounded in the context of the drop. So I kept it in. And then, then, and then, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Uh, it sounds like this in context. Kind of hear it. Yeah, it's actually filling up a lot of space. Oh yeah, this is um another fill. It's the same pluck again, I think. So it just has an OTT on it and an EQ. Um, yeah, and it works pretty well as these uh, for these fills. Uh, yeah, let's see what else. So. And this is just, this sounds like just an old sound design thing. Yep, it is. Just an OTT, a glue compressor, and an EQ. Pretty simple. And then this is, um, sounds like another old thing. Yep, that's a really simple sound. I think it's just like a, it's like a vocoder and a resonator, and the vocoder has the format knob being automated up and I'm just using it here. I'm uh, filtering it in like that. And then I have this sample. I was looking for something that was almost like a single frequency just to have this kind of thing, like this kind of fill. So I guess I put a dimension expander and I like just isolated this little, oops, this little note and then and that's what that thing is. This is a pitch mapped vocal that Zim sent me one day. And I just kind of threw it in. Cause it's kind of hitting the right notes there. Um, and it sounded pretty good. And then this is, sounds like another vocoded sample. Yeah, it is. It's reverse too. So it's that, but reversed and stretched. That's about it for the first half of the drop. I also have these little risers, I think. Yeah. Just for more riser-ing. Here I have just this little ARP that's being automated in, or a reverb that's being automated in, Dimension Expander, OTT. Uh, EQ, that's just filtering it in. And then, yeah, this utility that's widening it a little bit, which I don't normally do, but I did it here. And then in the next half of the first drop, it does change a little bit. Pattern changes. So this thing from the breakdown, or this little break section, is uh, actually used in the drop now with the virtual riot pads. Um, and it works pretty well to fill up a lot of space. And also these, uh, they play a different melody now. All together, those things sound like. And then with the sub. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay, I forgot how much I had on this group. So on the group of all these, uh, all these, let me turn it off so you can hear what it sounds like. So it's a lot quieter. So I beefed it up a little bit with a spiff, uh, this reverb that, that's where the reverb automations, that's where it's happening. OTT at 40%, a compressor, a, a multiband EQ, um, just a little bit of EQing and then this loop compressor. So, yeah. And then this is a stem from, I think it's the Hue Shift collab. Um, it's from Noctane. I just pitched it down and it worked. Uh, thanks Noctane. And then this is this thing, but longer. And then 
So that works as one of the fills. Oh, and also for this fill, it's the growl again. I think just doing a different little, you know, yeah, like a little, a little different, different thing. So there's the growl again, and then I have that arp that comes back. Here it is. Oh yeah, this thing from the build is back. Um, and it's just filling up a little bit of space that I thought needed filling. You hear this flow. Um, and I want it to be like, it's like, na, 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 but I want it to have like the na, 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 na. <laughs> What am I talking about? Like, you can just hear it without, and then it just accentuates that little da 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 da, da you know? And yeah, and the very last thing that plays in the drop is obviously the Selassie Riser. And then that is a lot of reverb. Um, So it plays that last, uh, goddamn, that last um, little melody, and then there is a lot of reverb. Where is that? It's somewhere, uh, and that's all that matters. So it's very, very, you know, dramatic. And to make it more dramatic, I put this sub drop for dramatic effect, obviously. And then, yeah, so that takes us into the second build. This is what the second build up sounds like. Some stuff might not be working, so it'll sound a little off, but bear with me here. Um, so let's let's get to that. So the first thing here is obviously the this sub drop, and then we have this pad that Noctane sent me. Thank you, Noctane. And then this thing from before as well, again. A lot of uh, actually this a lot of the same effects from before. So like this thing. This white noise downlifter, this square riser, this saw rise, uh, this piano thing, and then this breath effect as well. Oh yeah, I have this chord stack again from the first build up, except I am pitching it up to add, you know, more tension. And let's see, what's this? Oh yeah, the same sub from the first build up again. That's loud. Uh, and then I made my own sub drop. There's a lot of sub drops in this song, but you know. I made my own just by cutting off all the other harmonics. I have this other zap from the pre-drop. Um, like here. And I put it here. And for that little gap pause section, I put this little this little sample that I made. That sounds like this. Um, it's pitch map and uh, like a um, rebound, which is a Max for Live plugin. I put some OTT on it. I am low passing this in, and I put a delay on it. It's pretty simple. But it works. And then I have this dyadic vocal. This might sound kind of cringe, and I thought it did too, but I need to fill in space somehow. So let me just. So when I was trying to figure out what to put in this little gap here, when before I got to this, I got to this dyadic vocal, which is like. 
And obviously that doesn't work and it sounds weird. So I was like, okay, let me put pitch map on it first of all, because you know, who wouldn't? Yeah, great. And then EQ and then reverb. So, you know, it's just another riser, you know? And then I have this thing. This sounds a little off. I think it's because of all these uh, all-pass phases that are missing, but it's just the first drop, you know, chopped up a little bit with a reverb delay and all that. And then I added a sub under that. It's really just a sine wave. And yeah, and I have this thing, the same. Just to have something repeating, you know? And yeah, for the drums, I have this Noctane clap. Really good. The same clap from the first build up. And then I have this snare. And I'm just pitching up, filtering in, and putting some reverb on it. This is a, a snare by Unfamiliar, and I'm using it here because it sounds really good. And then the same kick. Oh, we know it's a different kick. Yeah. And then the kick from the second drop comes in and for the pre-drop I have this I have this virtual riot impact subsonic and it was really wide the sample itself is very wide so I took a utility and just lowered the width like almost all the way and then I have this barely alive glass sample uh yeah and then I have oh you can't even see this you have, or I have, this little thing I made. I made that with uh, Ableton Live Spectral Time. Um, just by messing with it, it's such a cool effect. The vocals are in a different project file, but I had Pookie, in the first version of the vocals, she sent a little pre-drop thing as well, and I didn't end up using them. And then when I was trying to figure out what to put here, I just kind of put the little vocal chant uh, that she sang in the pre-drop. Now we can move on to the second drop, which I'm pretty excited for. Now it's the same kick, I think. Yeah, same kick as the first one, same symbols as the first drop, um, except this time using a dubstep snare that I made. And that sounds like this. This is what it sounds like when it's dry. And I'm just... Um, using a transient shaper to increase the attack. And I'm uh, increasing the pump a little bit. So um, the attack, you know, the transient comes out a little bit stronger. And then I'm EQing it so it's a little brighter. I'm also layering it with this clap. Oh, and I have more symbols as well. So I have this Joe B one, this Noire one, I think. Oh, and then another Joe B one. So a lot of, a lot more uh, cymbals. It's a little bit, you know, it's a more intense drop in my opinion. This is what the drums sound like. Uh, on the last bar, I change up the snare to a clap, which is just a bunch of layers. A barely alive clap, a noctane clap, a sultan clap, this uh, boog clap, this, yeah, this Prism 212 clap, which is an unreleased song. That is not my song. It's another Noctane clap, pretty much. And then it goes back to the snare uh, in the second half. Oh yeah, and then we have this fill, which is just this Noctane clap and the kicks going ham as the, you know, as it like reaches its climax. Yeah, and the cymbals do that same thing too. Now let's get on to the main sounds, which uh, were really fun to make actually. This was the most fun drop out of this whole song. All right, so first thing, we have the vocal chops back. 
I will show you something cool about the vocal chops in a minute, but let's get to the actual basses first. So this is the first thing that hits. It is just uh, literally no effects. It is just um, this. It is literally just the first drop, except it's stretched out. No effects, nothing. And then uh, this one does have more effects, basically just to beef up the sound. This might look like a mess, but it's it's pretty simple. I just turned off a lot of stuff. So first a spiff, um, a soothe, which was kind of dumb to put at the beginning of the chain, but so a spiff, soothe, compression, disperser, uh, an imager just to widen the sound, an OTT, EQing, glue compressing, multiband uh, pro MB just to control the highs a little bit more, another glue compressor, another EQ, and a saturator at the end of the chain. I have one chain here that's just the highs uh, and the mids, and then one that's just the sub. And that's just because I wanted to have the sub a little quieter, and also because, so I can actually like turn off the sub in some of these parts. Yeah, that's all this is, it's just beefing up the sound. And I'm pretty sure it's this literally the... So as you can hear, you can hear the compression doing its thing, but it is just the stretched out version of the first drop. It's stretched out uh, and it is chopped up and that's all. So yeah, there's a, I brought back this sound from the first drop as well as a little fill because I thought it sounded like cool. You have like these intense sounds and then it goes to this calm little uh, like kalimba sound. Not a kalimba, but a pluck. So, and then I brought back the uh, the plucks. Except I changed up the pattern and I forget what else I did. I am, um, right, I, so I changed the format of these vocoders and I, uh, I think, yeah, in this second half I turned on these resonators, which uh, accentuate some of those notes in a really nice way. Um, they're kind of tweaking in this part of the song, as you can see, but it sounds really cool and I'm, I really like it. As you can hear, like the first drop, it sounds like this. And then with the resonators, and then with the plucks from before, it sounds cool. Same with this thing. Uh, and then I have the sub here. So I have this AU5 sample, um, which is just a sub. And I put it here, but I left the sub on it for some reason. Okay, that must have been an export mistake, but whatever. Um, so, yeah, because these basses have their own sub, but uh, these basses don't, I obviously had to, you know, put the sub back in. So they're doing their own thing. They're working really well together, in my opinion. Um, and then I have this Virtual Riot pad, this atmosphere. And I have that that beef uh, effects chain from this thing on the atmosphere. Don't judge me. And then this auto pan. And it's doing something pretty cool. In the first part, one and a half bars, um, I'm automating the rate of this auto pan. And then it changes to um, just a regular uh, quarter beat or whatever. Fuck, what is that? One fourth rate. And yeah. So then it just turns into that. So I thought that was pretty cool. I guess now I can talk about um, the vocal chops uh, again. So what I liked about this, I heard it at one point. Uh, the vocal chops and the basses are like, they have their own flows, but they're kind of working well together. You can kind of hear it. I don't know. I thought it was cool. It's kind of hard to explain, but. 
This is these like vocoder bases again, just chopped up differently. And also this thing is just, is this from the build, except it's layering well with these plucks and the bases cause it like this part in particular, you know, it gets a little bit more gritty and it just gives it a bit more character. More of the first drop stretched out and on the beats mode. And I just chose different spots. And then it goes back to um, just this pluck. You know, kind of reminiscent of the first drop, just playing a different melody here. And then we go into this gun section, color gun section, which is, believe it or not, it's the same beef chain, uh, except it's going rapid fire now. Here, I uh, put a little noise transient that I learned from Skybreak's Soul Shards tutorial, and it worked pretty well here. This resampled bass part is, it's more of a lasery transient, and I didn't, it wasn't like punching through like I wanted it to, and I had the noise transient, and it just works. It just works, it's like magic. Okay, so on the instruments, uh, instruments group, I put this EQ3 that uh, has no lows, no highs, and I am automating it to turn on for this little fill, so you just get the mids. Uh, without that, it would sound like just a little messy, and I thought it sounded cool. And here I'm also turning down the width for that, just this fill. So, you know. Oh yeah, and I also have this little layer, which is just this. And I actually used that sound in Aculi 5 like two years ago, but I needed to fill up a little bit of, uh, I think it was high end, not high end, but I just wanted to fill up the, or I wanted to layer it. So I put this thing in with some compression and EQing and Soothe and yeah. This was just to fill up more space. And then I have the Selassie riser here again, it's frozen. Now, hear me out, but the Selassie riser is actually doing a lot here. And here, I will show you why. So this is without it. And this is with it. Like, tell me this is not the best riser of all time. This is just this beef rack again, you know, with the, all the compression and uh, it's just chopping up all the different parts of the first drop. And it's just doing different. It's pretty simple. I gotta be honest. It is pretty simple. And then for this fill, I just have more stuff from the first drop. And then this is also from the first drop. Also from, oh, this is just from earlier. I'm reusing a lot of stuff from the first drop as well. So it's important to keep in mind. So this is cool. Um, I wanted to, I couldn't make that fit like properly in the second half of the second drop, but I still wanted to keep it in. So I turned it into a background effect by, so that's clearly the same sound. I cut off the lows and M Spectral Dynamics is doing a lot of the work here. In M Spectral Dynamics, I turned up the dry wet and then I hit, went into this edit section, turned the resolution to 6.8 milliseconds, smoothed this down, naturality to 0.4%, quality to medium. And then this is a trick that my good friend Selassie showed me a while ago. If you go to this processing shape, you click this button and then you can, you know, draw and everything. I put, I forget. Like, like, I can't explain exactly how this works, but I'm way too tired to explain it right now. You can right click and you can choose, you know, a shape. Let's say we want to do signs. And then you can click and hold on this white uh, dot here and it can change the amount of waves. So without it, it would be like 
or it would be like this. It would sound like shit. And then we do this and it sounds amazing. It sounds all spectrally and glassy and nice. And then I have a delay, a reverb, an OTT and another EQ. And it worked pretty well as a background effect. And then, yeah. Okay, so that was pretty much how I made the first half of the song. I hope you learned something. I had a lot of fun working with Exobolt. Check out the comp. The link will probably be in the description. Just go check it out. Go listen to all the songs. Yeah. Okay. Goodbye.